In the last video, I discussed how psychology is a science because it uses the scientific method. The scientific method, employed correctly, can lead our field to a better and fuller understanding of the human mind, behavior, and brain. But notice that caveat. I said the method works if employed correctly. Unfortunately, that is not always the case. And in this video, we'll consider four ways in which the fallibility of human beings or the realities of the practice of science can undermine the strength and success of the scientific method. The first domain where human nature can undermine the science of psychology is research fraud. Unfortunately, as in many areas of, of human uh, work, sometimes people in psychology lie about their work or misrepresent it for their personal gain. Psychology has seen its share of high-profile cases of research fraud. Dutch social psychologist Diedrich Stoppel fabricated data and entire studies leading to a criminal investigation and settlement and the retraction of over 50 studies. Mark Hauser, a Harvard scientist, was found in an internal investigation to have fabricated data in studies on animal cognition. Andrew Wakefield, the researcher who claimed to have identified a connection between the MMR vaccine and autism, ultimately had his medical license in the UK revoked over fraud and unethical behavior within his research. While these examples are among the most flagrant, considerable attention is now being paid to the statistics of published research. Using sophisticated methods, scientists can flag studies that have suspicious results, results that might suggest either inadvertent or deliberate malpractice by researchers. It is important to remember, though, that just because a research result is improbable, that does not mean fraud was committed. However, when we see such statistical anomalies on a large scale, such as an improbably high number of studies clustered around the minimum cutoff for a statistical result to be deemed significant, that suggests that something untoward is going on. That something may reflect behaviors on the part of the researcher, but it may also reflect publication bias, which is the second human problem that undermines the scientific method. As discussed in our class materials, publication bias is a general tendency of scientific journals to be more likely to publish positive findings over negative findings. What this means is that all else being equal, a journal is more likely to publish studies that find an effect of an independent variable, such as a psychiatric drug, than they are studies that fail to find an effect. A number of studies have been conducted that document this effect. A 2016 study looked at the estimated effectiveness of various treatments for depression, comparing results of published and unpublished research. The chart on this slide shows the estimated size of the effect for each study using a statistic called Hedges G. As you can see, the estimated effect size for the published studies was much higher than that for the unpublished studies. As another example, a 2003 study looked at 42 studies of the effectiveness of a class of drugs, 21 with positive results and 21 with negative results. Of the 21 with positive results, 19 were published. Of the 21 with negative results, only 6 were published. Four of those that found negative results were not even submitted for publication, which raises the alarming possibility that the pharmaceutical companies conducting the research deliberately chose not to publish research that might suggest their product was ineffective. The scientific method is predicated on the idea that after you find your results, those results are used to modify our understanding of the field. However, that can only happen if your results are shared, and if journals are more likely to share positive findings than they are negative findings, this can substantially distort our overall scientific understanding of a phenomenon in the field. The third human influence that undermines the scientific method is resistance to new ideas. In his book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, philosopher of science Thomas Kuhn 
outlined the process by which major changes in thinking, called paradigm shifts, take place within scientific fields. One reality of this process is that when a major shift takes place, some people who have worked for years under the previous paradigm may be resistant to adopting the new one. They'll cling on to the old model long after most people have come to accept the new one. Psychology is a field that lacks a single dominant paradigm. However, a common area where we see this type of resistance is in the domain of psychotherapy. Freud's model of personality in human development was a dominant paradigm for decades, until the weight of scientific evidence ultimately undermined many of its claims. Over time, journal publications on other fields, such as cognitive psychology, increased, while psychology journal publications on Freudian psychology declined. And yet, there remain people who still use Freudian tools or make Freudian assumptions within psychotherapy, often in spite of scientific evidence that questions their validity. This need to cling to what we know and resist information that suggests we may be wrong is very human, but it undermines the ability of a science to make progress over time. Finally, in the modern world, there is a difficult reality of science that undermines the effectiveness of the scientific method. Science is generally slow. It takes time to research a domain, formulate hypotheses, gather data, evaluate those data, and publish them. This means that bad claims, often unchecked or overstated, then spread worldwide by media and the internet in an instant, can linger in the public consciousness for many years before science can def definitely confirm or reject them. And the longer the public accepts a bad claim, the harder it is to undermine it. Again, we saw this in the autism vaccine debate. Andrew Wakefield's initial study defined the terms of the debate for many years before science could reject it, and in that time many people concluded it must be true or at least plausible. It took 12 years of research before Wakefield's study was retracted by the journal in which it was originally published by which time some people's attitudes on the issue had become entrenched and resistant to counter evidence. So, these are some ways in which human nature, or the painstaking realities of good science, can undermine the effectiveness of the scientific method. But, in spite of these realities, over time the method usually wins. A bad theory cannot endure forever, at some point, the weight of data will tear it down. Sometimes, this can require more time and patience than we might like, but the scientific method remains an excellent tool for understanding the world of psychology.